Hey there, welcome to my channel. I am Daniel Norton, photographer here in New York. This is going to be a rebroadcast of a stream I did on Twitch. So every Sunday on my Twitch channel, if you guys don't follow me there, go ahead and do so. Um, I do these live streams where we go through images that I shot. We use Capture One, we kind of edit them. I talk about what I was doing on the shoot, what I was thinking, uh, how I tweak them, how I deliver them, stuff like that. If that stuff interests you, jump on the Twitch channel and go ahead and subscribe there. But in any case, you can watch it here. Uh, in this rebroadcast. So let's get to it. Let's see if that works. Yep, there I am in the bottom. All right, guys, we are good to go. Um, I was going to do, well, maybe if we have time, uh, I'll do the, uh, on this last Thursday, I was live for Adorama and we did some like really quick product stuff. I did that because it was a massive snowstorm in the Northeast, uh, as you guys might know. In fact, I think it might have been snowing or it started, it snowed. No. It's not on Wednesday, so I don't know. Uh, anyways, there was a lot of snow, so we ended up canceling the... Um, we were going to cancel the live stream, but it was the last one of the year for me, so I was like, oh, no, we got to do something. So we did it for my house, which was pretty fun. Uh, it's definitely harder to do the switching when you're by yourself. I'll tell you that right now. But in any case, let's do this. You're looking at my screen now. Um, okay, so I am in Capture One, as I said. We've shot... Uh, this was a day of shooting. We shot 178 images. Uh, we did basically two things um i believe that ended up being that will end up being videos uh we were testing a couple things that i didn't really like so we didn't do them um before i get started here what i'm going to do is i'm going to come over here if you guys watched a couple weeks back and if you missed it and it's not here anymore because it might not be i know that twitch throws stuff out it's on my youtube now i created my own tabs here excuse me so this is actually my shooting tab uh tab number two here is my the editing tab, so I'm going to use this um, to do our editing. This is basically the the vast majority of things that I use are right here. So the, I'm going to open up the ones I use most often, and we'll go from there. Levels is by far the thing I use the most here. Um, man, I was flipping around watching some YouTube videos of people doing editing. Some people do a lot of editing to their images. I don't know if I should be doing more or if I should just be happy that I don't have to do all that. And I'm not talking about fixing things. I'm talking about like lots and lots of layers of like curves and this and that. And so I don't know. Maybe maybe that helps. Maybe I'll try to do a more elaborate one at some point and we'll see, see if we like it more. Uh, but I usually keep things very simple here. So the very first thing we're going to do, we're kind of combining things. We're editing the images down to the ones that we like best. And we're also what I like to call tweaking. You know, people always say to me, you know, when, I, when I'm going to do the headshots or whatever, they're like, do you vote, do you edit these, do you retouch them, is usually what they say. And I usually say, well, I will tweak them, you know, so that they'll have the proper color and contrast and stuff like that. I don't retouch, per se, unless it needs to be done, right? So what we're going to do today is what I consider the editing slash tweaking. So we're going to select all the images, because I found that it's best to edit by... Sub okay. Why is it not letting me do it? It does not want me to do that. Click on one. Huh. Okay. That's weird. Something weird's going on. It's making it's, it's making a dupe sound, so I'm just gonna go like this. Normally I would hit uh command uh A and that would select everything, but it clearly it doesn't seem to work. So I'm just gonna hold down the, the shift key and go down to the bottom and select them all. That's you know. Uh, so everything's selected now. I'm going to now hit the number three, which is going to rate. Oh. Okay. Okay, this is a problem because I need to change them all three stars. Uh, let me restart this. I don't know what's going on. Da, 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 da. Okay. This is just my, my desktop. I'm just going to start capture one again. I don't know. Maybe there's like a weird fluke going on. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good evening. Huh? Is it glitching for others here? Uh, the stream is glitching or the... There we go. All right. You know, when something doesn't work, you stop and you start again, right? So I... Whoa. Okay. So basically what I did here was I um, I reopened Capture One, right? Uh, I've selected everything. So uh, I've uh, 
I clicked on the first one, then I hit Command A. I want a Mac. Uh, I don't know if Command would be the same thing on a PC. And then now that everything's selected, I'm going to hit the number three. And uh, what that's going to do is rate them all to three stars. So we're going to edit in a subtractive method, meaning I'm going to remove the ones that I don't want to use versus um, versus picking the ones I like best. I just find that to be the best way to edit. I do see people do it the other way. It's just not what I do. You know, the idea of like giving somebody, um, like, so, so let's say I'm doing a headshot shoot, right? I'm going to sit down with somebody and I'm going to be like, okay, let's look at these together. What I don't want to do is, go, is say, uh, all right, Zoe, go through these and pick the one you like. Because that's just very difficult for somebody to do, right? But if I say, if you don't love it, then press number two, which basically gets rid of it, right? Takes it out of the search. Then what's going to happen is um, it's just faster and easier for them to edit that way. So I also edit my own stuff that way. Uh, so the way that we do that is I'm going to go up to my little search thing here. I'm going to switch this to three stars. And now anything that's rated uh, below three stars, so two or one, will be dis will disappear. So this whole thing was I wanted to shoot her by the window and make it feel kind of natural um, by filling in the light. So I want kind of light pouring through the window, and I want a kind of a, a, a fill, basically. That's, that's what this is all about. Um, the very first setup I have here, she's just sitting there. I'm getting a base exposure of the window. But also, you'll see I end up changing the light because you can see this hard light underneath her, which just doesn't look very natural. Actually, I think this is the light that's actually in the space. So it's funny I say it doesn't look natural because it's the space, the light that's there, like the overhead lights. Um, and I was just getting, I wanted the window to be blown out, but with a little bit of uh, detail. I find that if you have a white window like this and you actually expose it so that the shades aren't blown out, it just looks bad, you know? I mean, I guess you could, yeah, obviously you need to steam them if you're going to do that as well, but that just doesn't have that quality to me because if you look at shades on a day where it's bright outside, right, which is the vibe I wanted to go for, they will look white, like you won't see detail in them to your eyes. So I don't want to leave them dark. In a sense, I want them to be bright. I want them to be white, not blown out, because obviously, you know, I want to want to see their back there. So that seemed like a pretty good exposure for me, you know. And then what I did was I just started to. As you can see I turned off the overhead lights, and I think I brought a reflector in. Yeah, and I just brought a V flat, and you can see it bouncing in, which again is not bad, right? But here, now I've turned the light on, right? I'm actually, you'll actually be able to see this. I'm actually bouncing a light into the V flat, so. What I'm creating here is, this is the crappy light that's in the space, right? The overhead lights that are just in the ceiling, plus the window. This is without the lights on in the space, so I turn them off. This is just daylight, right? And again, if I if I wanted to save this exposure-wise, I could bring it up, right? But what's going to end up happening is my windows are going to start to get blown out a bit. So, you know, you really have to decide where you want to be there. Like, that's not terrible. And actually, I might save that one. So let's just go back up. This one is trash. So I'm going to hit number two, so it's gone. All right, let's see what's going on. Oh, all, all my stuff popping on automatically. You have a question. Doesn't putting someone in front of a window create an unwanted silhouette? Uh, well, I mean, they're not a silhouette, right? She's not a silhouette. I mean, even this first one, which I just brought the exposure up, this is just the natural light in the space plus a reflector. I mean, she's not a silhouette. What you are going to get, though, in these cases, are you, you are going to get this kind of fringy light for the back. But again, that's what I'm going for here. If that's not something you want or like, you need to really control your exposure tighter. Um, in fact, in a space like I have with white floors and lots of windows going on, it's very difficult to get a silhouette of somebody in front of the window because there's so much light in the space. So to get a true silhouette is actually very difficult, in my space anyways. Um, if you just had a space that only had one window and it was completely dark otherwise, you could probably get into the silhouette. Um, what you need to be wary of, and, I'll, and I talk about this in the video, and I'll just tell you right now, is that now that I'm lighting her, one of the most important things, and maybe this is what you're asking about, is if I look at this, well, this is just a reflector, it's not going to do anything, but if I come down to here, what you want to be wary of, right, is that she is not casting a shadow on the background, right? If I hit her, and I'm pretty sure I'd probably do it in the video, if I hit her directly with a hard light, What's likely going to happen if I don't balance it correctly is you're going to get a shadow from her on the background. And that is going to look weird because why would there be a shadow from her on the background? Like nobody wants, you know, that doesn't feel right. Yeah. So 
if that makes sense, right? I think I'm thinking. I'm, so that's really the, the trick here, right? Is when you're balancing somebody against the windows, you don't want their shadow to be behind them because they wouldn't have a shadow behind them if it was natural, right? Because we can see clearly that there's a shadow here. Like if you look, like inside her neckline, right behind her hair, you see that shadow there? We don't want that shadow on the background. So that's really where you're balancing it. That's, that's kind of how you have to do it. So here, what I did to make it feel more natural, again, I'll, let me show you again. I may have brought the exposure up on this one. This is that. So the one on the left is absolutely natural light, right? The one on the right is a controlled light with, um, with actually it's a hot light. You could also use a flash. The reason why I would do this and not just shoot the natural light is control, right? I can keep absolute control of my subject. I mean, yes, if the light, if the sun goes up and down outside, the window is going to fluctuate in brightness and darkness, but my subject won't change in exposure, right? Because I can, because she's basically being lit, so that's going to allow me to basically keep a consistent exposure on her the whole time, wherever the light's hitting. So that's the reason why I added a light, um, and it just creates a nicer light. You can see, I mean, looking at them side by side, if I did not tell you that the one on the right was lit, you might not really realize it, and that comes down to the light being balanced. And that's really one of the, the key things we need to learn when we're lighting with natural light is that is to balance the light so that it looks more natural. Because one of the biggest complaints or thoughts or whatever or negative things that people say about using flash or using any kind of light is that it doesn't look natural. But the reality is that you can make it look like the natural light. And, you know, the benefit of it is that you have control. So both of those are fine for me. So I'm going to keep those two. I ended up using a wider angle lens. I wanted to create something kind of a little funky. We had this whole idea that we were doing this like weird stripey, like she has stripes and uh, it was kind of had this weird 90s vibe. So I was going for a little bit of like wide angle distortion. So you're going to see some some distortion here in these portraits um, here because I'm using a wide angle lens. So here I'm just kind of figure out where I'm going to try to be at. And again, also, if I was only using the natural light in here, her legs would be much, much darker than they are because what would happen is, you know, the only place I can bounce light back from is where the light's coming from, which is here, right? So by having a V-flat over here, um, I can actually get her whole body lit, which is what I'm doing. That's why her leg here and this part of the thing all look totally fine, right? You can even see the shadow. See the shadow right here? That's clearly not coming from the window because the window is here, right? And also we're getting a good reflector on her belt buckle. You always want to get a good belt buckle. Belt buckles are key. All right, but that's just an odd pose, so I was probably just testing something. All right, and here we go. Nice and natural. Now that I'm looking at it, I feel like maybe she's a little bit dull against the window. So we're going to do... Oh, <laughs> my stand's right there. Look at that. Oh, Daniel left a stand in the shot. I do that kind of stuff sometimes. And by the way, this is the reason why you should be on a tripod. Because I did not shoot this on a tripod, which means that the stands in all those shots, I'm going to have to remove them each one, one at a time. If I had been using a tripod, once I did the removal of the stand once, I could just copy and paste those that, that setting, and it would just remove the stand in all of them. But unfortunately, I did not, because I was not using a tripod, because I was trying to be cool. No, the camera is actually not on. The light is not on the camera axis. The light is actually... God, did I take a picture of it? I'm trying to see if I took a picture of it. So the light is... Well, there's the light. <laughs> the light's there, right? Um, and it's pointed, actually... Um, I don't think I showed the V-flat. I don't think I didn't take any pictures of it because obviously we're doing a video. Um, basically, the light is... I'll try to show you on the picture. So, if this is our image, the light is over here, right, on this side. I can't make the mouse pick. Come on. There we go. The light's over here. It's pointed across the scene, basically in front of her, over to here. And there's a V-flat right on the side of her. So I'm actually lighting her more or less from the side. It's kind of where the camera is because I'm standing right next to the V-flat, but it's kind of a little bit off to the side. It's not flat to her. It's kind of like, you know. And also there's a window over here, too. So there's a window here that I'm also using, obviously, for light. There's the light itself, and then there's the, the V-flat. So yeah, it's not on camera access uh, in, in this case. Uh, partially because I needed to get it closer to her than I was. And because I was using a constant light, it wasn't bright enough to basically put it uh, so far away. You do need to be careful when you're doing that, though. 
obviously to not hit the subject with stray light. You know, you got to shoot it past. Them. I use the barn door, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. All right, let's do this. So, here she is. She's looking good. She's like, oh, this is for my EP or whatever. You know, we had that music vibe going. Um, all right, so I'm going to come in like I normally do. I'm going to jump over here to my uh, levels. And I'm going to grab my brights. That's always what I do first. I want to give myself some contrast. So I'm going to drag my brights over. Now, that is obviously going to affect the window too, but I don't care about the window, you know? If you cared about the window, you would need to probably do, um, you know, you'd need to paint it in. But I don't care about the window, so I'm just going to drag that over. I'm going to take my mids and shuffle them a little bit until they look right to me. It's probably about right there. And then just so it's not too flat, I'm going to grab my darks and bring them back. And you can see I'm adding contrast. A good way to do this sometimes is to be punched in on the face because the face is what we care about. When we're bringing those highlights up, what we're looking for is to get, like, see on the tip of her nose, her chin, her forehead, that T-zone, as they call it, right? Depending on the person and the angle, you might also get it like on the cheeks, especially if they're wearing like any kind of like blush or whatever. But basically, you want to get that that highlight, right? Now, I'll, I'll over exaggerate it so you guys can see. See how that highlight's popping? That's really what we want. And of course, the mids are just so that it doesn't get too flat. And then, of course, the darks are so that it doesn't. Uh, we don't want it to to look like overly flat. A lot of times images coming straight out of the camera can be really flat. Um, so it's good to, you know, if you're shooting raw, so it's good to kind of give them a little punch. Now I want it to feel very natural, so I'm not going to get all crazy and make it all contrasty. This is basically what it looks like naturally. Now I won't bother with, I don't think, retouching out this uh, stand because honestly I don't care about the side of the radiator. None of that's really important to me. So if that's a problem, which it is, I'm just going to grab my crop tool and I'm going to. Um, I'm gonna make sure it's set it. Uh, yeah, I had it on 69. I'm gonna set it on unconstrained, and then I'm just gonna grab my crop in and there's plenty of extra space here at the bottom, so I can do that. So it stays kind of more or less a rectangle. Um, I don't want to get too close to the top of her head in this particular case. I know that's strange for me, and the reason for that is because if I crop in really close, if you notice right behind her head. There's a, a, you can see the window coming through a bit. You, you're really going to notice that line. It's going to be like, why is there a dark line right by the through her head? But when you do this, you can you can see that it's part of the window. So it makes sense. So I, I would leave that space there. Uh, in that case, I would not crop in close to her head. I would leave space around her. Gives a plus, she's also looking this way, right? And so if I come in too close to the top of her head, she'll be looking too far off the frame. So for me, that's a good place to crop it. Okay, now I'm assuming that the next one is very similar. Yeah, so I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna hit uh, Command Shift C to copy all those settings. And I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna paste them, right? I'm now going to, uh, then I'll come in and tweak if I need to. Like I might change that crop a little bit in this case, because I feel like there's too much space underneath her. So I'm just gonna go like that. See, even here I get that little bit above trying to keep it but of course she's looking down at me now so if i really wanted to i could do that but i'd have to come this far and then that's just weird you know we, you know i joke a lot about it i cut off the top of people's head but you need to do it in a way that makes sense right if, if you're in for a tight close-up portrait or something that makes sense if i'm shooting a full length shot where i have her feet in the shot uh, you know in most cases i'm not going to want to cut off the top of her head i'm not going to say you never do it but um it's not something i would do very commonly do I use a color checker, a gray card? Did I? Um, no, I did not. Um, you know, when I'm shooting just kind of general portraiture, I, I often don't worry about that because I'm not going to follow the color exactly perfect anyways. Um, I usually use it, like I was using in this case, uh, an LED light. I dialed in my, my color to what the LED light was set at so that the light on her is is as correct as possible. Um, but I have, I usually use, if I'm going to use the, I use the digital target a lot from Fotec, you know, um, color checker passport is a good one as well. Of course, there's a full color checker. There's all kinds of different ways you can do it. Um, I think this is pretty good. I might actually come in here. I'm just going to grab my, um, you can see here my, my white balance is set at 5,000 basically, which is what the camera was set at too. 
I'm just going to bring my exposure up a smidge. I feel like in this case, I just, I don't often do exposure, but I feel like exposure here makes more sense than adjusting the contrast. Because the contrast was where I wanted. I just feel like her skin tone is a smidge on the dark side. You know, you got to be at least a little, I mean, this is a contrasty shot and she is, she's being like heavily backlit. So I think that if you, and again, whatever your style is, you should how you want, but I'm kind of naturalistic in my stuff, even though I am creating my own light. If you were to take a picture of somebody that's heavily backlit, they're going to look flat. Like to have contrasty light, for me to go in here and like dodge and burn and make these shadows really deep and this and that, it wouldn't make any sense. It'd be very weird. It would look lit. And the whole idea here is that I want to shoot something that doesn't look lit, but that is. So that's why I'm choosing, you know, to, to do the, the things I'm doing. Uh, but I did not use a color checker. Uh, why crop it? Yes, that's true. It's not, it is cropped. Uh, well, right now she's more or less in the one above it. Uh, hold on. Uh, I don't know which one you're talking about. She's pretty more or less centered. I think you're tripping. I think you're pretty much tripping. I'm bipolar dead center. A lot of times I will crop somebody off to one side though, just because that helps balance the image, you know, but it really depends. In this case, she's pretty much dead center. Yeah. I mean, I'm judging from her body, not from her hand, right? I mean, she's a little bit to one side, but if you look at her, if you draw a line straight down from the center, which is like right around here, that pretty much goes right through the center of her. So, yeah, I don't I don't know what you mean. You probably were checking it when I was in the middle of cropping, so you probably couldn't notice. Or are you saying originally? I don't know. That's the only problem with chat being slow. So I'm just copying and pasting the settings now because they worked for me, right? So there, that's the same, basically. This all looks good. She's got, I got a very specific question about catch lights. I mean, this is one of those situations where I might care about them. I don't tr intentionally try to create catch lights, but if, if she, there was no catch lights here, her face would look very dark because you're so far away from her and everything is so matte. So in these situations, it's nice to get a little highlight and she's going to have it because you know, in this case, because there's a big old light source right over here, like kind of off, just off to the side near the camera, there's also a window over here. So she's going to have them no matter what. If you are in a situation where you're lighting and you don't have that, you just maybe want to be slightly aware of that, I guess. Uh, hey, Rick, that's okay. You can be late. <laughs> it's flowing. Uh, Oh, Felix light. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah, I haven't used those in a while. Actually, these are Felix lights I'm using above me. With Emily. I think it's probably the one you're talking about. Yeah. Man, so many of these, uh, you know, people that I've, that I've worked with over the last few years, 2020, of course, has been very dead for seeing people. So a lot of people um, I haven't photographed in a while. See, here with their chin lower, it's getting a little bit more dull in there. But it's still okay. Like, I'm not, but if your chin gets too low, I have a feeling it's going to bother me. Um, I'm going to do the same thing with the exposure on this. By the way, if the if the window blowing out bothered you, because I know somebody's watching this is probably thinking that, um, I'll just show you. I mean, I would do it in Photoshop. I always say this. <laughs> Clearly, I'm not sponsored by Capture One. Uh, I would do this part in Photoshop because I'm better at doing it in Photoshop. But you can do it in Capture One. What you can do is you could actually come in here and you could do a layer Hmm. Right? You could do a new layer. Let's see. New um empty adjustment layer. I mean, and then you could then I could just paint. I get that's a paintbrush to that right there, right? Nope, that's a dropper. What's my paintbrush? There you are. You know my paintbrush, I could paint the one obviously I'd probably use a thicker brush, but whatever, you just, you get the idea. I could put I could paint in um get a little more brush bigger. I could paint in the window, right? The the really bright parts of the window. La 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 la. Paint, 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 paint. Ah, ah, okay. Okay. I, I'm just doing this quickly because I don't actually, I don't want to do it for this image, but just to give you an idea if you were into that. Um, 
I'm going to paint the, well, on the top of her head there, but that's okay. I'm going to paint in uh, that. If it, Obviously, if you go where you shouldn't be, there's an eraser. I think that's the eraser right there. I could, you know, unpaint the, her forehead like that. And now that I have that like that, I can now on this layer, I can just make an, an adjustment. I don't know, exposure, let's say, bring the window down. So if you like that better, you know, you certainly 100% could do it. Obviously, I would do a better job with the, the paintbrush. You know, and, and, you know, sometimes you want to do these things because they make more sense. Maybe it matters to you what's outside the window or you just like it better. To me, what that ends up looking like, and I guess it's maybe because I understand it more and maybe your average person watching it wouldn't see this, but that looks fake to me because it's, I know that there's no way somebody should be sitting in front of a window like that and not have the window be blown out. It's like, but if, if you like that, of course, there's always an in-between too, of course, right? If you like, you know, you can do that. So not bad. I mean, right? Where am I? I went the wrong way. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. The thing. That's why I'm like, why is it not going back? You know. So if you like the window, uh, to have detail, it's easy enough to do that. You know, simple. Right. Could do a luma curve. Yep. Right to get the better mask. But basically, the idea would be that. Um, if you want the window to show, I personally like the window blown out because I feel like in this type of situation, that's how a window would look to me. So it again, it comes down to how you want to do it. If you like the window darker, you know, more power to you. Um, and yeah, you can definitely, uh, let's see. There's also a way to I'm trying to find it really quickly. Do you set it to like I'm actually I might already have it that way. Let's see. You can basically set your mask uh you could use you can use a luma range for the mask, like to re to record, you know, and then just paint up. So there's definitely different ways to do it. Um, actually, maybe one day we'll get into that. I, I feel like these are more overall editing. I probably should do. If you guys are interested in very specifically how to cut things out, I think I'll do an entire session of that because that really can be involved. So if that's something you want to see, put it that in the chat here, and I'll I'll set up another time. Right, the luma masking. Right, exactly layer tool because you can just go in and basically do a luma so yeah let me know if that's something you guys want to see because i'll then like i did with the oh like i did with the setting up the tabs i can literally just do one that's just masking people out because then maybe that's something we'll use a lot i don't use it a lot but i, I certainly can show you how to do it if that's something you want to see um i i came in for a couple closer shots here clearly um let me go back to my normal tool Let's paste our settings. Oh, I don't need the crop anymore, so rid of that. This guy's dark. Clearly changed something. Oh, the light probably changed outside. You can see how much of the frame was being created also by the, just the natural light, you know. Um, hold on a second. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like I, I turned off the light. That's just a reflector now. I guess I was coming in just to see. Oh, pro probably because I'm I was going to stand in front of it. So I just wanted to see if I like the... Uh... It's always fun to try to remember what I was doing at the moment. Yeah, I'm just going to bring it up. Nice, clean. This is basically just natural light with a reflector. A little bit on the soft side. But, you know, such things, such are things. So I'm going to say no to that one because it's soft. Clearly something was going on there. All right, we're back. I must have been adjusting something. It's always interesting to, to, to remember what I was doing. Luckily, there's video documentation of what I was doing. So um, I think maybe I figured out the light stand was in the shot because suddenly it's not there anymore. 
So I moved everything around. Let me take the crop off. Good. All right, crop's gone. That looks good. I'm gonna copy these settings because I think I'm not gonna need that crop anymore. And we're gonna move down. All right, so here she is looking down. This is kind of what I was talking about. I, I like the shape of her face. This all looks good, so I took the shot. But we can see that she's not gonna have that catch light, which is gonna make her eyes very dark. So even with the, the settings pasted in, the whole thing still feels very dark. I'm gonna use my exposure to bring it up, but can you see that she still feels, I'm actually gonna make her skin tone slightly brighter than I normally would. Um, I'm gonna add a little brightness. Just because I think if I don't have that, then she's gonna to fade too much. So even though I like this pose and I like her attitude here, without that catch light, and again, it's not something I normally talk about a lot, but um, without the catch light, it's tricky with her chin down, you know? Yeah, we get it, it's back here a little bit. Because I cut off her toe, but that's okay. I'm okay with cutting off people's toes. I think if the biggest complaint somebody has about German is that you cut off a piece of their toe on top of their head, you're doing okay. Huh. It's funny. I'm at a hundred of a sec hundredth of a second, and I can see that even even with a thirty millimeter, because I'm uh, probably not taking time to study myself, I'm, I'm the images are not quite as sharp as they should be. They're fine though. I mean, I'm not. <laughs> right, the radiator. They haven't used the radiator in a while, and actually it was on too, so she was very uh, a good trooper to sit on it. And, you know, I mean, you might be thinking, like, if you're in New York today, <laughs> it's so cold, oh, sitting on a radiator would be nice, but if anybody who's ever been to my studio, and I know some of you guys probably have that are going to watch this, uh, it is very hot in that studio. Always. Yeah, I'm just pasting those same settings. I like the window blowing out. This one I'm not loving. That feels like it's in between things. Okay. No, I don't want their legs there. Or there. That's better. Yeah. Because I'm just periodically jumping in, ch checking the sharpness, because I know that I was... I can see, you know... This is, a, I get spoiled shooting with a strobe and not having to worry too much about moving my camera. I have, I think I talked about that before. I have a bad habit of really moving my camera quickly, which is why I usually shoot on a tripod because I know I have a bad habit. There we go. That's nice. Right. Now we've got everything. This will be the one that's out of focus. No, it's good. Right. Her neck's extended so there's light. She has the catch lights are there. It's bright in her face. Nice and simple. Yeah. Really can't miss here. There's always at least some point during the shoot where the model is laughing at me. Uh, who knows what I was doing? <laughs> no, I, I do not. I did not worry about the head being in proportion to the to the, to the feet. In fact, I was kind of going for a bit of a distorted feel here. We were. Tr I was trying to encapsulate kind of an older style. You know, this is something that I would have done like in the '90s when I'm shooting a lot of. Uh, well, when I first started shooting. Um, and I was shooting a lot of, like, indie designers and uh, um, stuff like that. We were, that's actually soft because of the movement. <laughs> we were all about using distortion and lenses and stuff. It wasn't like, I think people have, have a tendency these days, people these days have a tendency to be, like, over worried about things being, like, super sharp and not having distortion. And um, that's just not something that, you know, that I really care about a lot in, in, in work when I'm trying to catch a feeling. Like, I'd rather have the image be slightly soft and have distortion if that creates the look I'm going for, which is what we were going for. Obviously, you need to know that and, and be able to articulate that to the subject so they know what they're getting and they're also into it. So, like, you can see that her feet look really big because I'm using a 29 millimeter at this point, you know, and, I, and I'm really close to her. So, she's stretched back. I'm using the wide-angle lens to create the feeling that I want to create this kind of depth right then here I jumped up to a 50 and I shot a much cleaner portrait I mean you can see that the difference between I'll punch in on this one so you can see the difference between like the way that the face is here come on 
Oh, Capture One's doing that thing where it's a uh, oh, we got camera shake there. All right, let me get rid of that one. Yeah, the way the shape the the face is like distorted here, right? Versus when you jump to a fifty, where it's nice and squared off, right? Clean, clean, clean. These are all just nice, clean. You know, and again, now I'm closer to her, so I don't mind chopping or putting her really close to the top, chopping off little bits of her head. That doesn't bother me because it's part of the style. This is all just very super clean. This is the, um, and you notice I'm not doing anything to these because this is just, this is easy, right? This is easy like, oh, whoa, I want to do that. Okay, so I'm back to the wide angle again. So this is actually probably a better comparison because the light's the same, right? We can see that with the wide angle lens, you can see the distortion on her, you know, because she's leaning back away from the lens. She's stretched, right? Here, she's basically normal because the lens is level for her. It really depends on the look you're going for. And, uh, you know, both can be very easily achieved. That's one reason why um, I like shooting with the zoom when I shoot this kind of stuff, because I can just move around a lot. And that's exactly what I did. All right, so we're going to start over here because I tried to paste those settings and they were way off. So I'm just going to bring my highlights up a bit here, like I always do. Shuffle my midtones a bit to get them a little brighter, and then bring my darks in so I don't have, you know, so that, that I have darks. Uh, that looks pretty good to me. And these settings should be here. I'm keeping it really close to the edge of the frame. <clears throat> but, oh, there's a top of head top. See that? You got one, guys. I could almost stop too. It's funny, you can always tell when somebody's moving within the frame. Like if I'm shooting and they're kind of moving while I'm doing it, it really creates some interesting. Was this with the Z6? Yeah. Nikon Z6. Yeah, I've been using the Z6 a lot for pretty much everything. I really like it. Um, if I was shooting, like if, if I needed to just shoot this, like if this was what I was shooting, I might have, um, if I planned and this was the only shot I was going to do, I might have busted out my cannon and shot with the uh, with the 85. Because this would have been really nice with the 85 as well. Because it's more clean. But when I want the versatility, I'm, I'm usually using the zoom. And I like to use the zoom on the Z6. Although I also have the same zoom on the, the cannon. But... I'm definitely enjoying the... Uh, you know, now that I'm used to it more, I'm 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 really much very much enjoying the 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 fact that the mirrorless is giving you that like live feedback as far as what you're getting, especially in date in, in uh, available light where it's changing so rapidly. So when I go back to my Canon, I, I'm generally using that now because it's a DSLR. I can look at messy hair here. Uh, I'm using that now for more like stuff where I'm really controlling it, although. The last set of headshots I did for Mercer, I shot in daylight with the 85. So what am I talking about? <laughs> I guess I just like a lot of different cameras. What can I say? It's a curse. Yeah, there's a lot of good ones here. And so I have not, this is the first time I've worked with, with, uh, with Zoe. So I am leaving in a lot unless I feel like they're very they're like they're out of focus or I'm just not really happy with it because I want to make sure like I got rid of the ones obviously with the the light stand uh, that was you know, random shots but I'm keeping mostly everything because I'm not sure exactly what she wants and this was you know part of the the thing we talked about was that she would get some pictures from it so I want to make sure she's getting pictures you know that, that she wants so she may choose a different one than me I would say that if you're going to do that, just make sure that you don't keep any in the pile that you're giving to her that you just don't want to be seen, right? I mean, you want to give them a lot of variety, but also you don't want it to be like, oh my God, I hate this picture, and then they use it because that's exactly what will happen. Any picture you leave in the mix is something they'll use, you know, so you always got to keep that in, in mind. <clears throat> you, know, you just have to kind of... You know, be be liberal with what you give somebody, but also keep in mind that they will use it if you give it to them, or there's a chance they'll use it. Is there? So, see, I don't even mind the eyes closing in a couple of them, so that doesn't bother me. So I'm keeping those. That seems a little odd. Yeah, she did a great job. 
Um, you know, with these really fun, we kind of just talked about what we wanted, like the style of it and the whole feel. And again, this is like the kind of thing that I might have shot for like a commercial type model, let's say in the 90s, or for like a, a, a musician, you know, that just needed some shots of themselves for whatever. This is very much in that vein, you know. Bring them over by the window, bust out some shots, you know, and, and some of the cool clothes that they brought with them. And those could be cool for the inside of the CD, that type of thing. As opposed to, you know, the more structured shot that you might do for the cover. Although you never know. I've had some really kind of random shots end up on CD covers. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Was it shot for a video? Yeah, I think there'll be a video of this. I'm actually changing... Oh, you're the first one to know. I'm changing my format a little bit for, for 2021. So I shot a series of videos, these, these included, that I still have to figure out exactly how I'm going to edit them together. So it was shot with the intention of it being a video, but whether or not they'll actually be a video... Well, We'll see. I hope so. Um, okay, so then I decided I was going to do more of a... Uh, actually, I had an idea to do something in this bright colored dress she had against a black background, which did not work. I just didn't... I ended up not liking it. We we, we kind of tried a few things. Like, I just did... This is just a nothing shot. Um, you know, I, I think it's a neat shot, but it wasn't really a video. So these aren't going to be... Um, there we go. Okay, I was like, is that soft? Like this, I kind of like actually, uh, you know, because that, that's always the way, right? You like it later. The light's kind of to the side. Um, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll keep this one. I'm tempted to make it black. I, I, whenever this happens, I never always think this, and then I never like it. So I'll try it though. Because if, if I'm going to make anything black and white, I always kind of know ahead of time. Like I very rarely make it black and white in post, but I feel like re I think I was had the intention of maybe doing black and white here. Um, but let me just see. No, that's like every black and white picture that somebody has on their Instagram. Okay, no. So, I like this. A part of the reason why I chose this dress was for its bright colors. So, what I'm actually going to do... I'm going to flatten out my mid-tones a little bit, and I'm going to bring my darks in. So, what that's going to do... So, let me do it again for you guys. So, if I just bring my darks in... I'll do that first, actually. What If you watch the dress... See how the saturation is starting to pop? But even like their lips, like all the skin starts to pop. It gets, but the whole thing's just very crunchy now, which isn't, I don't think, appropriate for this dress. So I'm just gonna roll my midtones back to kind of fight some of that crunchiness, and when I and, and actually add more contrast into my lights. But when I do this, uh, the whole thing is going to. I do obviously I give them way too much darks. I'm gonna come back to my darks. What I want to do is create a balance where I get some of that saturation. And I know that like you can go in there and go to each color channel and da-da-da. I like to do things in camera, like I say. So, you know, this is what I mean when I talk about in camera. Like the shot in and of itself, just adjusting the basic premise of it, should be able to bring out what I want. I used a hard punchy light. I've got saturated color here. So I don't really, and, it, and especially when you would compare it against her skin. I may do a little bit of highlight control there, though. Bring that in a bit. You see, that's just my highlight savings thing. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then I'm going to actually you know, take my lights and just pop them a smidge. Yeah, I know I just brought them back, but sometimes I feel like you need to... Yeah, that's nice. It's simple, right? Simple, dark, portrait, something you know that I like. You could also drag your saturation up a little bit. Which I'll do a tiny bit. You know, and again, everybody that you photograph is going to be a little bit different. Because I always get pretty neutral skin. Like, if you did this to me, you'd see all kinds of red patches all over my face. Because I have a lot of red in my skin, and it would really start to pop here. So then you'd need to go into um, the red channels, or the red color balance, and drop it. But she actually has really good even skin. So you can see that, you know, even in normal spots where you might get, like, a little bit red right here, it doesn't look bad. It look, actually looks good. Yeah, I like that. All right. That's not for a video, but we're going to need it. Here, I, I don't know exactly what I was doing there. So I, I had a plan, and then I was like, no, no, that's no good. This is just garbage, you know? Garbage, 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 garbage. All right. All right, so then I just... I, I was all over the place here. <clears throat> what special sauce was in the cadence black and white? Uh, not, not a lot. 
It it, it doesn't matter. I'm sorry to all the people out there that love to sell their presets. It, I could give you all my presets. You wouldn't unless you shot it exactly like I did. It's not going to give you the look that that you think you're going to get with it. They, what you need to do is shoot some, light something in a style that is your style. Think about how you normally would like to photograph something, you know, in black and white. Make some images and then sit there and futz around with that image until you get a black and white style that works. And then if you are consistent in your lighting, at least generally, then you'll... Because if you notice, whenever you see me do black and white, I almost always drop that cadence black and white in because as varied as the tools that I use, the lenses, the lights, the places I shoot, my style, the way I expose things, the way I light, the way I do things is consistent enough that that one style almost always works for me. You know, so... The only time that you might want to have a different... You might want to have a different style depending on... If certain people have different kinds of skin tones, then you might want to change it. You know, like, but it, but it, like if somebody has a very, very, very different skin tone, your base style might not work because of the lighting. But generally it will because black and white is all about highlight and, con and shadow. And... Highlight shadow is your lighting. Okay, so this was me just... This is actually just... <laughs> I, I, I strung up a... Um, if you watched on my YouTube channel, I don't know, a month ago? Hello, how am I? I'm pretty good. Um, <laughs> we painted uh, some drop backdrops, myself and Seth, just kind of goofing around. So I'm like, I got to use it for something. So I actually just hung it up behind her. I took some b flats and threw it up on the wall. And then she just stood in front of it and just took a quick shot with the window light first. I wanted to create something more dark and funky, kind of like what we're doing here, which we're going to get to in a second. But since I shot this picture and it looks pretty good and everybody likes a nice little flat natural light window shot, I'll just bring this up for her. This is literally just the light in the space. Yeah, it's underexposed, so I'm just going to fixing that. Also, the color's off. Here's where having a color target would have been nice because there's nothing really here. So if you goof up, like I did here, and I didn't shoot a color target, and it's in a weird light, usually the best thing to do is to, is to go inside the eyeballs. That's what I've found. Um, that's generally going to give you a fairly clean uh, white balance. But then I would go in, and usually um, you got to tweak it a smidge. So I'm going to make it a little bit on the more yellow side, because I like my portraits to be warm. Actually, I'm going to leave it. Um, do that again. I'm going to leave it for now, actually, before I do that, because I'm going to get everything else set first. So this is pretty good. Uh, I've adjusted everything down. I made my exposure a bit brighter. I'm going to just drag my darks in, which I didn't do, just to give myself some contrast. Yeah. And then I'm going to come in here. I feel like, okay, so I may actually jump in here. Um... I'm going to grab my midtones. I feel like they're a little on the yellow side. So I'm literally just going to grab my midtones uh, and just cool them off a smidge. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, I just felt like my midtones were a little on the yellow side. It was weird. So it, what I did there was I just grabbed my midtone and I dragged it down. Um, you know, you can do your midtones, your highlights, your shadows. I think I might also drag my, my shadows to the blue side as well. All right, I'm just looking at it and just moving it across slowly and just watching it change. Yeah, there we go. And I mean, since I'm doing that, I'm actually, now I'm gonna go the opposite so I can have some contrast. I'm just gonna drag my highlights into the warms a little bit. So now I brought the, the highlights to a little bit towards the, towards the red slash yellows. Yeah, there we go. And of course you got this thing here where you can do it all at once, but I like to do them individually. Yeah, it's pretty good. All right, there we go. So I just kind of fixed, that was just natural light crap. Um, crap. <laughs> uh, F4, 70 millimeter, you know, nice and shallow. Uh, also, the reason why the color was probably kind of bleh is because I'm at 1250 ISO. And while at 1250 ISO, and I know everybody loves to do this, they're like, look, it's 1250 ISO and there's not that much noise. <laughs> the thing about shooting high ISO is it also messes with your color and your contrast. Like, those are the big things. Forget about the noise. Yeah, most cameras today can shoot to higher ISOs with not much noise, but... Your color is just not as pure when when you when you shoot uh, with the higher ISOs. But anyways, that's a pretty nice shot, and I feel like that you know that would be nice for Mama like that shot. All right, so here I am. I've turned the light and pointed at her. Just very very. Um, actually, I think I did the same thing. I think it's a V flat with the light bouncing off of it. Yep, V flat light bouncing off it. It's too low here uh, for me. 
So if you're shooting with really flat light, like the window here, the light's actually also pretty low here, right? Because uh, the windows are low. But here, with the with the actual light source feeling low, you're getting this, which I'm not a fan of. You know, if you get anybody who has like nice, nice, right? Who has like larger lips, they generally have this like the, their face kind of projects. So what you get if you underlight them is this like uh, these lines here, which can look a little bit weird to me. So I don't usually like to light somebody that way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my background's crazy. Uh, uh oh. Yeah, so not only is the color weird here, which I have to fix it, but also the light's just in a weird position. So I'm just going to say no to the shot, period. Okay, it looks like I moved it slightly. You can see I moved the light. I think what I did was put it closer to her. Oh, I know, I moved it behind me. So it's more flat. There we go. Now we can see it there, right? And you see how that changed. We still have this. But the light's now flat instead of kind of coming up underneath her, which isn't terrible, but again, it's nothing. What's really fun about these shoots, um, like this, that, you know, because sometimes I'm doing these and they're very specifically, I went in and shot three videos that day and we, like, this was really, we planned the first shot. I, I, planned, on, I planned nothing, I should say. But I wasn't planning on really doing more than one thing because I didn't know how long this new style of video was going to take to shoot. But we had time, so I was like, let's just shoot something else. So we were just like literally throwing stuff together to see what we might find. So you're going to see there's going to be a few things, then we're going to get into something a little bit. Uh... So here I'm crunching my blacks for a couple of reasons. Right? I'm sliding these blacks over. That's why I mean. when I said crunching my blacks, I mean, I'm pushing them further than you normally would. That's actually going to add contrast. It's adding contrast, especially around like the dark areas, like her eyelashes, her eyebrows in this case. But also this background has this like deep red, right? So when I crunch my black down to that, right? It takes her from being looking a bit overexposed, which you need to look. Basically, I'm overexposing her midtones, and I'm bringing the, the blacks back. I'm kind of, in a sense, I'm, I'm forcing my dynamic range into a smaller area, so forcing contrast. I do think it looks a little cool as well, so I'm going to roll back and brighten it up a bit with, the, with some um, warmth. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, Again, if I wasn't sure, I could go into her eyeball again. That's way too warm for my taste, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to do it to, to my eye, you know? That, that looks good for me. And remember, I know what she looks like, so I'm judging it based on what she looks like to my eye and what I feel like she should look like in the image. If you shoot a color checker, even though that might give you perfect color, it may not look the way that you want it to look. So never feel like you're... Um, confined to using the tool. Just like when you use a light meter. Every time I say this in a live stream, I always get blasted, but I don't care. It's the truth. The light meter might always be right, but it's not always what you want. So if when you read a light meter, that's just giving you an idea of what you should expose. It's not telling you exactly what you should be doing. So what you need to do is think for yourself. So in this case, the white balance might have actually been warmer, but I want it to be different. Okay, so here... Oh, here I'm blending it. So what I did here was I turned the light down really low to use it almost just like a fill instead because I, I I looked at the natural light and I was like, oh, I kind of like what that looks like. And the the just being lit was too much. So I was like, what happens if I mix them, which is what I'm doing here. Um, I just applied the same setting and now I'm just going to raise the exposure up because that one was underexposed. And now we're getting this really kind of naturalistic, kind of crunchy. Uh... Now as I'm looking at this, I'm regretting that this is not what I continue to do <laughs> because it's not. So I know that. Uh, hmm, that looks pretty good. I'm going to bring my exposure up a smidge. I'm going to grab my highlights a bit too, to give myself some more three-dimensionality, bring that like highlight up on her nose. Actually, now that I'm doing that, I'm going to drop the exposure back down. This is the thing. Once you move things, you, you need to... It's a, it's a juggling game, right? You, you, there's never like, okay, I'm good. This is why presets aren't good. Because my preset, preset might say 0.61 on the exposure, but that might change depending on what I do somewhere else. So... All of this stuff is needs to be work needs to work together. But I will always copy what I had and paste it to the next image in that series, because that's usually going to work for me. See here, I think I I turned up my light a bit, so the whole exposure is a bit brighter. So I'm just going to bring the exposure down. But see, when I do that, the image starts to look flat. So now I'm going to bring more of the of the lights in. 
Also, I feel like now it's looking too warm because I'm getting more of the daylight in there. So I'm going to drop that a bit. Yeah. Then again, I'm just going to copy it. I'll go to the next one. Here she's like, oh, I just woke up with a headache. Kill that one. All right, so the, here I was like, okay, so what happened was, I'm remembering the day now. I was shooting this, and I think what I said to Dave was, yeah, these are just a bunch of, you know, clean shots of a, of a pretty girl. Actually, I really hate the color on this one. Wow, that daylight color is just garbage. You come in here. There we go. Yeah, that's better. This is why I don't... I mean, as much as natural light can be great, man, it can just be garbage. You know, it's like you can... Using a light source that you can control is just such a better option in my mind. Okay, I'm just, I'm trying to match them now so they all look the same. Okay, so this is my favorite by far. I feel like this one might have too much blacks. So I'm going to drop back. Blacks here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so they're all in the same set, basically the same thing. I'm changing the light slightly. So what I decided was I saw this and I was like, yeah, this is just a bunch of pretty shots of a beautiful woman. Like, let's try to do something a little bit more grungy. So I spun her around the other way, and I was just kind of experimenting of where she should stand. So there's going to be a bunch in a row that are just kind of weird um, as I just kind of figure out what I want to do. So these are not going to be good. They're really just me kind of exploring the, the space a bit and seeing how we can make it work. Oh, well, that's kind of neat. Okay. But sometimes you might get a good one there. Oh, boy. Nope, that's no good. That looks like so I put some cheap Instagram filter on it. All right, so let me... <laughs> Let's reset that. Okay, so here it's flat and dark. So flat I take care of with contrast, right? I'm bringing my lights lights in. I'm going to bring my mids in to make it a little bit less dark, but then I'm, now it's too flat. So now I'm going to bring my darks in, right? That's how I'm fixing that. Yeah. There we go. That's kind of interesting. We'll keep this one. Why not? That's not terrible. Is that the worst thing I've ever done? Close. Uh, then I get flipped her back the other way and was like, well, let's look at the natural light. Not the natural, but the uh, the light coming from the other direction. You can see here that I've got reflected light. You can barely break it up. This is, these are the lights in the ceiling, actually. So now I'm just using bounced around light in the space. And super shallow depth of field. I'm at F, F2 now. I switched to my 50 millimeter. And this is actually not terrible. Again, I'm doing the same. Now I'm back to my normal procedure here. I'm, I'm bringing my lights in, shuffling my mids, and then bringing the darks in. And I get that really shallow depth of field going on. Here I was like, well, i to show some background. You know, again, these are mostly me just playing around. Which I think is a, is something to really do, right? When, when you're not sure, if you just have somebody on set and you just want to kind of try things, it's great just to be like, and I told her this, I was like, listen, we're just going to shoot like 20 shots and I'm just going to like literally walk around and try some different angles. I'm not going to worry about them being perfect at this point. Then if we find something that seems to be working for us, then we'll make it better. So these, these I knew right from the bat that they were going to require some, if I wanted to keep them, they were going to require a little tweak. So that's what we're going to do. Cause I think the, this one's actually pretty cool. It's funny to see what I end up choosing because in the, in the aftermath, you know, you always like something different. That's one reason why I often say don't like edit yourself on the on the set, because you might find that like when you get home that you actually like something way better than what you thought. Yeah, that's pretty good. These are interesting. All right, weird hands. No, I hate that. No. Okay, so now now I think we're getting closer to where I ended up. We're kind of lighting. I decided to stay with the super shallow depth of field, which I don't usually do, and I decided to go with like a more punchy light. So. What I did was I, yeah, this is it. So I ended up messing around with the barn doors a bit. Um, so let's go in here. I'm bringing my lights over. I am bringing my mids back so I don't lose everything. And then I'm going to bring the darks in, just like I always do. This is getting a little crunchy con uh, saturation wise, so I'm going to drop the satch. And also the highlights a bit. 
I wanted to create something that felt like it was happening in a space, something was going on. Now, the unfortunate thing here is that I, I'm focused on her back eye, which I think I don't really like. Um, I mean, her front eye, rather. But her back eye is the eye that has the light on it. So part of me is, it makes it, it it's interesting because it makes the image feel a little strange because you're brought into that back eye right away and it's out of focus and you're, it's kind of jarring. So I'm not going to get rid of it right now because I don't know if I like it or not. Um, yeah, and then I just moved her around the space. So these are going to become a little bit more. I think, too, if you guys have been watching my YouTube channel, I've been going through some of my stuff that I've done, like with hot lights, where I use really kind of contrasty light. So I was kind of um, bringing that out a bit in this work. So this stuff is always a little bit tricky because when you're, when you're working with such a tight, constant light like that, any move that she makes... It's not like using a big old softbox where she can move all around and it's fine, right? When you work with this light, if she moves like, she shifts the weight of her, of her leg, like the light completely changes on her. So you've got to be really fluid in how you work and you're going to end up with shots where you're going to need to tweak them, which is what we're doing right now. Okay, we got too much of a squint there. I went soft again here. Oh, what did I just do there for? Don't do that. Uh, I mean, she might want soft shots, I guess. Right, an exception to things. Well, yeah, if you have two eyes and the and the ones in yeah, this is why there's there's never a rule, right? If you have two eyes and one's basically in shadow, the one that's out of shadow should be generally should be the one in focus, whether it's closer or further away. That whole focus on the nearest eye thing is, you know, I, I tend to try to work in a way that's just I grab what I think looks good to me in, in the moment, and I don't worry about what somebody else wrote in some photography textbook years ago about what we should and shouldn't be doing. Because, you know, they're not my client, nor are they me. And I'm, I'm mostly out to make myself happy. Yeah, I'm realizing with her skin tone, I'm really liking the idea of, like, crunching these blacks down around her eyes so that, that her, the real, her eyes, this, like, really deep blue, it's really making them, like, very, very dark, like marble. So I'm, I'm kind of pushing that here as we go through these. Okay. Nope, that's not going to work. All right, so it looks like I, I was trying a bunch of different stuff again here. Let's go back. So I'm going to reset the image. Okay, so this is super flat. Um, again, right? I'm just using a V-flat. And the thing is, like, this is fine. Like, this, this kind of image is great, right? It's fine. But when you do this, and then five frames later you do that, like, to me, I just can't get back into the flatness, you know? So, um, we have to look at each thing as their own individual shot, though. So, I'm just going to come into this guy. I'm going to add a little contrast here. Shuffle my mids, as always. Bring the blacks in. That's a nice, clean, top of her head cut off, Daniel... Classic shot. Same thing here, but I'm going to drop the exposure a tiny bit. I'm also going to warm her up a tiny bit, too. It's funny, man. I'm so, so used to um, working with uh, strobes, or when I use constant lights, usually at night, so I don't really have the issue, but the daylight was shifting color like crazy. So it's really affecting, um, since I'm mixing light here, it's very much affecting my shots. All right, here we are with a little bit more contrast. Uh, I, again, what I'm almost always doing is pasting the old settings just to see where I start. You know, this is basically what they call split lighting, right? It's lit from one side for all you guys that are keeping track. And what we're essentially doing here is just creating different types of light just by moving around the studio. No. Oh. Okay. All right. Yeah. So clearly I went back to the clean and I was like, nah, let's do the shadowy light. So then I came back and, and yeah, because I'm feeling much more at home here. So this is closer to the stuff up here. So I'm just going to go back to one of these, this one, and I'm going to copy those settings. At least is my starting point. I mean, again, you can just dial it in yourself, but. Yeah, like that's too much, clearly. So 
Um, but it's good sometimes to give a starting point. All right, so I'm just gonna reset this guy and let's do it from scratch. So highlights come up, right? Add some contrast, midtones across so I don't lose detail, a little bit of darks. Exposure in this case, I'm gonna drop just a smidge, but I'm gonna raise my brightness to add a little more kind of overall contrast. Uh, color wise, I think it's fine. Yeah, I don't love the shot, but I think it's okay. And here I focus on the right eye. Okay, this is better, right? So here too much barn doors getting, or so we'll get rid of that one. That one's better, I just pasted the same settings. Same deal. Okay. Yeah, this is interesting. We've got some funky stuff going on here. All right, there we got a little squint going on. That's better when she's looking at me because at least the squint seems to bring some feeling into the thing. Yeah, see, I'm focused on that front eye and I'm, I'm kind of regretting it at this point. I feel like I probably should have focused on the back, but it's okay. This is better, better. Oh, eyes closed is always good. That's nice. No. It's just a nice, clean, hard, light shot. Eyes closed. That's pretty good. So I'm just, I'm just pasting the same settings here, guys. I think I was trying to get like a good eye, good shot with the eyes open properly because, of course, the light was bl blasting around the eyeball, so I feel like a lot of those are just very awkward. This kind of half-barn door light is really the light I'm liking the most. Because it, it feels like something's going on. You know, she's entering a space. There's some light happening. Yeah. Like, rather than just a clean light across her face, having that, like, kind of struck with the barn door, like, that's, that's really nice, right? We're focused on the close eye. But now it's not completely in shadow. But she still has some shadow coming on that side of her face, so it's not flat. Because hard light ten, can ten, can tend to be flat if you're not careful. Uh, do I have fluorescent lights on in the studio? No. No, it was daylight doing that. Yeah. It was the end of the day. I mean, it's the winter. So like the, the light coming through the window is very, very yellow. Uh, which can be great when it's the only light you're using. But when you're, when you, if you're working with daylight and you're only working with daylight, right, then that's great because you just adjust, right? And you, and then it's beautiful. But when you have a, a constant source that's always the same color temperature and the daylight's changing inside of it, you get this kind of odd mix of it. It's like having a gel on one light and mixing it with the rest of your lights. So it kind of doesn't change it completely but it adds like a little kind of greediness to it that isn't always the best thing in the world. Yeah, so in the end, um, you know, this, well, that's actually, I didn't really like the shot. So focused on the close eye with less shadow, um, you know, so you can still see it, I think is ultimately what we like. And this painted backdrop, you know, gives us a space to be inside of. You know, it doesn't, um, it doesn't overly distract from what's going on. It doesn't necessarily look even like a painted backdrop in some of the shots. Yes, yeah, I'm not liking this as much now. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going back up here because I'm deciding I don't really like those shots. <laughs> Sometimes I, I'm, I'll, well, that one's not bad. No. Yeah, these, these gritty ones are much, much better. They're much more the style I was going for. This I like. I'm not loving her hand there, but that's okay. And then soft is good here. That's kind of an interesting shot. This one's this is something you see on Instagram a lot. Make fun of that. Yeah, but overall, I think we got something really interesting. I'm kind of regretting I didn't follow up on this, but this wasn't really a video. It was like literally put a girl in front of a black background and hit her with the light. Um. Yeah, let's see what we got, guys. So we went down. We got. I think we started off with 178 images. We we reduced it down to 111. I'm gonna select everything. And now I'm going to make them all four stars. Okay, so this is like if you wanted to do a second go through, I'll change this to four stars or higher. And now we can go through and play around. It's so funny to see the, like the flat light compared to the, I think these first couple now, I was keeping them more flat and natural, but now that I'm looking at it, I think I'm going to add a little bit more punch to them. 
I think they're just a little bit flat for me. Especially this one. Yeah, there we go. All right. Oh, yeah, I don't really like that. So now I'm going to go back through, and what I'm doing is I'm going to hit three on all the ones I don't like. This way I can pretty quickly recover them. Um, so I'm just going to put my finger on the three and then the down button. I'm just going to quickly look at them, and if, if something just doesn't look right to me, I'm just going to hit three. And I always do this part of the edit fast. Like, I don't linger on them. It's really about what I see in that moment. Like, what's grabbing me? Because that's really what comes down to it. Like, if you think about, you know, so much of the work that I've done was in, like, magazines and stuff. It's like, that's what it is, right? You're flipping the page in the magazine. If it doesn't immediately grab you, you they move on, you know? You can't uh, rely on, like, in a gallery, let's say, where people are going to stand there and stare at your image for five minutes. Like, it's just not going to happen. Like, a magazine is all about, it's either it works or it doesn't. You know, so I think that um, doing this like secondary walkthrough is a good way to kind of work through um, <clears throat> your images. And that way, that if there's something that for some reason you were like, oh, but I kind of uh, I kind of like this one, though. I know I kind of like it. But if you look at it the second time and you're just like, no, then you just lose it, you know. And again, I'm putting a three on it. So it's not like I can't go back and just look at the threes. And ideally, your your shots that, uh, when you go back and look at the threes, are still really good shots, you know? <laughs> Hopefully they're not garbage, right? Because you should have got rid of the garbage in the first pass-through. Like, everything that I'm taking away now is just something that isn't as strong as some of the stronger stuff. You know, for whatever reason. You know, it's just not grabbing me. It doesn't have the emotional impact um, that I thought it did when I saved it, you know? And all these four stars should really be something that you're you'd be proud of you could even go through one more time and do five stars if you really felt like so right there i got rid of uh 12 images let's look at them let's just look at the images i got rid of i'm just curious so rating equals three stars so these 12 images yeah I don't think, again, I remember I mentioned this. She's looking up. The catch light's not so strong in this one. It, it doesn't really catch me. This one, I don't know. I feel like her expression isn't as strong. This one, there was just others in that series that were better. You know, here, I think her head's tilted too far. I don't like her hands in this one. Here, I think it's too much. Like, she's the battle at the top of the screen. Like, she looks too, because it's a wide-angle lens, and she so she looks, like, smushed, because both her feet and her head are at the same plane, but the rest of her body's not. So she's got this weird distortion going on. Same thing there. Here, this is fine, but I didn't really like the way her eyes are. Here, her eyes were closed, which I didn't think really worked. This one, I think that like half smile isn't so functional here. Here, I don't really like the way the light is on her lips. And that's it. The rest of them I thought were strong. Right? If we go back and we go four stars, you know, we look at similar images. It greater than or equal to... Four stars, there we go. Um, what we'll find is, I think that'll stay if I do that. You know, similar images, like here she's leaning forward, but not as much, right? You know, here her, her, her chin's extended more, so it looks it looks stronger, you know? Here I just think she has better, like, hand position, which I didn't like in the other thing, right? Here, even though she's leaning forward, there's just something about it where, where it just works for me. It looks a little more distorted, and it works for me. So it really comes down to what you like. It's that, it's that moment where you're grabbing the images that really stick out to you, um, and that's really what you're looking for here, you know. And in the end, like for me, like of everything we shot here, you know, something from this end series that, that we struggled a little bit to get, like we were looking for this. This is this is a shot that we searched for, right? I didn't walk into the studio that day saying, hey, I'm going to have Zoe in front of me and I'm going to hit her with this hard light that's going to partially hit the background and, you know, have a reflector there and use the barn door to scoop it off. And right? this is not something I planned at all. It really came from us just working together and collaborating. And I think that those are oftentimes the strongest images. So, you know, be open to that is, is I guess, my advice. And I guess that's it for today. I think we're pretty good. We've been cranking at this for about an hour and a half. Uh, I only have 36% left on my battery. So, yeah, guys, uh, let's switch back to this so you can even see me when I'm talking. Oh, yeah, you I hope you enjoyed that. I've got some shots that we did of Marissa that I'm going to, I think, do next week. 
Uh, it's the Christmas holiday this weekend, so if you celebrate those things, I hope that you uh, have a good one. And if not, then I just hope you have a good week, period. Um, if there's something else that you want to see me do here, because it seems like the masking thing comes up a bunch, so maybe I will... Uh, Uh, maybe I will do a session just strictly on masking, if you guys are interested in that. The different ways to do it, you can do loom mask, and of course you can cut things out. Uh, and another question I get a lot is also on um, on doing the, uh, oh god I can't even think what it's called now. We put the thing over top of it, the, the, uh... oh my god. Like if you're doing a layout. I will think of the name of it before then, so I may do one strictly on that. Um, yes, yes, Zoe, thank you. If you see this, she did a great job, which is really a trooper. Um, um, but yeah, yeah, so I'm going to do a few overlay. Thank you, yes, it's called overlay. My brain is just not, I need more coffee. Yeah, because people ask a lot about the overlay. And a lot of times when somebody asks me, I just randomly grab a picture and put it on there, but I think I'll do a session where I put some actual overlays in and I show you how you would do them. Because um, I think that's actually... I've done it a few times when we've done the advertising thing on Adorama live streams, but I never really focused on it. So um, maybe I'll do one on overlay if you guys want to see that. And I'll definitely do one on masking because I feel like that's a big thing that, that people ask about. I don't do it that much, but I know it's something people do. Um, so yeah, if there's anything else you guys want to see, let me know. Um, you can reach out to me. Of course, you're not to reach me. Um, and of course you're not, if you're not follow, following, is that what they call you? If you're not following me here, uh, please do. So you know when these come up, but they are usually on Sundays at three o'clock. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed that. As always, it was great. Um, again, if you want to join me live, go ahead and follow me on the Twitch channel, which you can find the link in the description. Uh, obviously if you don't subscribe here, go ahead and do so and ring the bell so you get notifications and I'll see you next time.